Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, it's a little bit different. Uh, usually, mm. I guess we talk about a lot of, you have to do this to achieve <laughs> these things, um, but uh, not today. I just really wanted to sculpt a hand. Yeah. So uh, here's, uh, here's me sculpting a hand <laughs> for about 25 minutes. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I guess we'll just cover some topics about hands and... Yeah, it's and been a heavily requested topic here. So you can see the way we were starting out is just cube with, uh, or a <laughs> bowl of, essentially a bowl of clay, mask out some fingers, and then just uh, drag them out. I actually initially, I did a recording test before this as well, mm. where I used the new snake hook brush in ZBrush, just to see if it was terrible. Mm. I have I have opted to not include that bit <laughs> in here. Maybe I should have, I don't know. But I've found that again, just masking and dragging out is just, it's just the easiest. I have the most control. Yeah. It's just really, really quick. Yeah. And I mean, all of this is being sculpted with uh, Sculptors Pro. Yeah. Which has been, this was, this is, this is like the first time I ever touched Sculptors Pro. So good. So it's it's very interesting. Even though we did a video on it like a few weeks ago, who yeah. was who was doing that video? I don't know. That was definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, the same approach with the thumb. It's just dragging it out, and then oh, this is one of the features I really love about Sculptress Pro. Like you can just uh, tessellate the mesh, mm. just smooth it out, and it, like tessellates it. And depending on on how small or big your brush is, it just adds or or subtracts resolution. It's, it's such a cool feature. And like from a technical point of view, like this isn't hard. What's hard about essentially any kind of sculpture is not the technical aspects of it. No. You can, if you have a, essentially a cube and a clay brushes and a move brush, you can sculpt anything. The hard part is, is understanding how to sculpt. Yeah. That's really the tricky part here. Like that's why we're not going into like, this is why this is time lapse here. Because the important bit here is not, how did you extrude the thing out? How did you extrude the <laughs> finger? We, we, you know, you, you masked it and then you just dragged it out. Yeah, I mean, essentially you could do all of these things with a with the move brush if yeah. you wanted to, which is a little more tricky. Yeah. So just to go over a few of the tools that I usually use when I sculpt something like this. So obviously I, I use the transpose tool. Mm. So I'm, I don't know, I guess I'm, I've gotten to the point now where I feel like such an old person. <laughs> so when, when someone introduces new features into uh, application, I just go like, oh, wow, I like it the old ways. Yeah. I don't still understand how to really use the 3D gizmo in ZBrush. It's pretty, it's pretty tricky. So like, tra seriously, transpose lines for me is that's just how I've been doing it for, I don't know, 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> so. And also get off Morton's lawn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Ant. <laughs> um, yeah. It's. So with that, like transpose lines for me work work just fine. Yeah. There there were some cool things I found about the three D gizmo that I can use it for, but in most cases I still use the, the transpose lines. Yeah, same lines. here. I, I use it for because because I, I mostly use serious pure for organic stuff, so I don't yeah. really need to move it exactly seven units in x axis. Like it's more like I want to move this thing over here. Yeah. <laughs> like general, I want to rotate something. So yeah, I'm the same in that regard. And then I use. Clay buildup just with a standard alpha mm. because this is I wanted this to kind of have a rough feel so it didn't need to be a you know it didn't need to be like a smooth human hand I wanted mm. it to have a little bit of a sculptural feel to yeah. it so standard uh, alpha on the, the clay buildup brush yeah. and then the um, move topological brush the move topological brush is really good in this case in mm. between the little fingers yeah. because if you just use the move brush it can be tricky to sort of get them. Yeah. Um, either that or, or mask out individual fingers to, to move them. Yeah. So That's I'm really I'm, I'm just working off of my, my hand. I was sitting with my left hand up, sort of like <laughs> posing it, sort of, eh, yeah, this could be good. Um, so that's the rough shape, and that's also how I'm sort of able to infer where the, where the, where the creases mm. go and where all the folds of the fingers go. Yeah. Hands are weird because normally when we, whenever we're talking about sculpture here, we're all like, well, you start with the bones and then it's muscle and fat and the skin. But hands is like, yeah, sure, you have bone and all that. But if you were to draw out all the bones in the hand, I mean, th th mostly the hand here is is a lot of fat pads and skin on top. Yeah. It's like you don't really see a lot of the bone directly. Sure, you see it in the fingers, but like just the palm of the hand, it's yeah. all it's mostly just a lot of fat and skin going across. That's what's really giving the hand its volume. Yeah, you have like a bunch of tiny muscles that mm. can help the hand, you know, splay and like close yeah. and everything. It's it's, it's, it's this is not a, like a like an anatomy going no. into the depths of like the no. polishes 
Brevis, whatever the name of yeah. stuff is, it's, that's not important here. The importance here is just getting the shape of the hand. Yeah. Getting the feel down for it. This is more an observational study than like a hardcore anatomy yeah. one. Like here you, you saw me just going back a little bit with the tendons for the fingers. One interesting note with the tendons there is that from all the fingers, they sort of converge on one point mm, right the, yeah. at the wrist. And getting that angle right, is I think, is crucial for getting the, the look. Yeah like a more sinuous hand look good yeah the the, the fingers are not or the the um, the tenons on the on the fingers are not parallel no no they, exactly. they converge to one point yeah. essentially on on the wrist this is where i really started to like i guess the first sort of 10 minutes of this sculpt was was very much me figuring out how to work with sculptures pro mm. so i was a little bit like a child that just got a toy <laughs> trying to figure out how to work with it optimally yeah. And pretty quickly, I got a hang of it with, in terms of, you know, deleting detail, adding detail. Yeah. The fact that I can go in now with a damn standard and just add like a crease here, even though the rest of it is super low res, is, is amazing to me. Yeah. Because I don't need to uh, dynamesh something and have it be so super powerful. high res. So I can work on different level of details at the same time. Mm. It's a very sort of different paradigm. You know, when instead of just going from low to high, yeah. here I can go low, high, mid, low again, and then up to high again. Yeah, and different areas can have yeah. different density. Like the tip of a finger doesn't necessarily need a lot, but maybe you need a really wrinkled uh, area with a lot of wrinklage. Yeah, <laughs> wrinklage. <laughs> wrinklage. One of the, the things we're also kind of like, we're opening up here, guys, that, you know, that w we have a lot of videos here where people kind of assume that the two of us, we know everything. It turns out we don't. <laughs> like, <laughs> there are many things we don't know. There are a lot of people who just like, can you make a video on subject X? And we're like, guys, we, there are things we know, but there are also many things we don't know. Yeah. Whenever there is a new software out, of course we have to sit down and learn like everyone else. There is no like magical... Magical button. No, learning. just because we've been doing like we've been doing this for a long time here, and you know we've been doing three D for a long time, and we we've been doing education for a long time here. We still have to learn it the exact same everyone else does, which is just trial and error, and reading the documentation. Yeah, super fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> there was actually one subject that I wanted to cover here. Um, so before I get into that, with hands specifically, right? Hands are, I think, hands and feet are probably some of the like most overlooked mm, things definitely. when it comes to sculpting. Yeah. And hands on them by themselves are like a tiny sculpture within the sculpture. Yeah, it's like a body by itself. Yeah, because there's every single finger needs to be positioned, it needs mm. to look correct, the spacing needs to be right. So it's being able to get like a nice hand with a with a nice gesture I think is so important. Yeah. And for for a lot of this video um I, I feel complete trash mm -hmm. while I'm sculpting. Yeah. And it was something we talked about. I don't know if like a lot of people are covering this kind of topic, but this is something I've struggled with since the beginning and it's something I struggle with now. Like when I just start out doing a sculpt or a project or something, it always looks complete crap in the beginning. Yeah. And you, every time I get the same, oh boy, can <laughs> I really do this? Oh, oh, maybe I forgot everything yeah. I ever knew. Or did you ever know anything at all? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you, so it's like this, you go through this stage of just self-doubt for yeah. such a long time until you get, oh, wait, okay, now it's starting to look like something. Yeah. And it's, I think it's being able to persevere through that uh, little tiny purgatory yeah. until you get to a point where you're, you're satisfied with it. Uh, obviously, the more of a beginner you are, I guess, the more of a, uh, like a bad phase you can have because yeah. it'll take longer to get to something where you're you're happy with it yeah. but it's just something i still struggle with i think i think a lot of people struggle with this and that's also why we're bringing it up now because i don't feel this is something we just really talked about mm. how like I, I genuinely feel like the worst artist in the world for the first like hour of the sculpt and if <laughs> yeah. it's an hour and a half doodle that's pretty bad yeah so it really just takes a long time I'm sure a lot of you guys are also struggling with the same thing here like and and you start getting like mega imposter syndrome where you genuinely feel like a fraud. Like, you know, like we said, we've been doing this for a long time here now. We, we're working in the field and we're like, when are they going to figure out that we don't actually know anything at all? <laughs> <laughs> but it's also like, then because then you start to compare yourself to other artists and you start comparing yourself to your former self and yeah. all that. But that's also because that you know, former artists, the show, well, other artists are showing their best work, of course, and what the work you're showing, 
your past work might have something you be spending like months on mm. and now you're comparing like a legit 10 minute doodle at this point that's what i'm doing like when i feel like crap at that point i'm just like i look at the time and i'm like i've spent 35 minutes on this of course it doesn't look good after 35 yeah, yeah. minutes very few people can make anything good in 35 minutes so yeah, it's, it's, i think it's a tricky thing to get past but it really is you just have to keep working through it i guess and hopefully you'll get there yeah the, the only way i've figured to deal with that is just getting comfortable with sucking yeah. Like the, and, and that is like like Morton said like in the beginning as well like maybe if you're sculpting for the first time maybe it doesn't look good maybe like it, that sculpt never actually looks good so that's like that that feeling like multiplied by like a hundred mm. and if you have that the only way I found to go, to go through that is just to to just do it yeah. just go through it and just be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, I mean sometimes you're you're not going to have a success. Like yeah. sometimes you like so I'm happy with this hand not right now, but at the end of the mm. sculpt session I think I think it's a decent hand. Maybe mm. a, I was actually thinking of 3D printing it. It'd be mm. fun to like <laughs> get like a little key holder or something. <laughs> um but it, at this stage it's just trying to ignore the little voice saying like oh this is so bad. Yeah. And and just treating it as an exercise. Like yeah. I haven't sculpted in a long time, like sculpted, sculpted. Yeah. Sure, freehand. Sculpt, freehand. Sure, I sculpted work, but you know, I have a mesh to work from. Maybe I detail it. Maybe I did do some concept sculpting, mm. but I don't do this kind of sculpting very often anymore. No. It's just not a lot of time. So when I actually get time to sit down and do this, it's like, oh, okay, I have to remember these things and yeah. get back into it. And now when you're you couple that with a new tool on top like Sculptures Pro, given mm. it's easy to learn, yeah. it's still like it's a it's a lot of things to consider all of a sudden. It really is. Well, what I do as well when I, whenever I feel that like the sculptor is like crap, of course you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. That is also a main thing here. But it's also like, don't panic. It's like if I'm doing a sculpture, I'm going through. I have, I have like a checklist, which is something we're talking about a lot. It's uh, you can check this in improving your improving your sculpture video, which we have we we'll link below. And um, where we're talking about how the foundation for sculpting is really like start with a the skeleton, then you're adding muscle then you're adding fat and then you're adding skin to it. So I'm just going through that. If something is absolutely not working, I'm like, all right, so is the skeleton correct? Maybe I screwed up the scapula. If you mm. screw up something like the scapula, the rib cage or the pelvis or something for a sculpt, like you're in trouble. Like nothing is going to work. Like maybe you've just detailed like crazy on top of that. But if that foundation isn't working, nothing is going to work. And if let's say that is working, then you go through the next thing. Are the origin and insertions and the volumes of the muscles correct? And it's the skin folding in a weird way, and you're just you're just doing this in a methodical way. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what's going on right now in the video as well, where I, I realized that the hand was looking a little blobby in places. Mm. So you know, I'm trying to tighten up the the the. Um, the, the bones sort or of like trying to push them towards the surface of the skin to really get some hard edges to sort of contrast the, yeah. the smoothness of, of the wrist. And what, one really important thing I find with, with hands especially is the fingertips. Like fingertips mm. have a very, it's very easy to get fingertips to look like sausages. Yeah. And it's like you, you have to look at a hand, figure out how does the fingertip actually, actually end, like sweep up mm. or just go down. I think fingertips are so important when doing hands. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's with with this new tool, you can go in, you can like get some definition on the nails as well. And yeah. ugh, I love Sculptors Pro now. So good. Uh, you might have figured out that we like Sculptors Pro. <laughs> if you want to learn how to use Sculptors Pro, we have a video, not made oh, yeah. by Morton. <laughs> not not, not made by so, um I just passively comment on it, <laughs> yeah. pretending to know. <laughs> now I actually know. No, no we're not actually <laughs> Now I know how to use the hotkey <laughs> to activate it. <laughs> yeah. well, what's, what's interesting about hands as well, and which you can kind of extrapolate to everything else that comes to sculpture, is how much natural variation there is. Like when Morton showed me this hand, I was like, yeah, you looked at your own hand. Because, you know, I, we hang out a lot. And I know kind of generally what your hands look like, which is weird. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you can easily tell that there is a lot of variation if, if you're doing like if you're doing this like brute character versus like this elegant little princess like you can't just smack one hand on top you can't have one generic hand mm. you got to modify that like it's the curves of it it's a shape language if you're doing a brute you know you're doing big fat hands if you're doing a beautiful little girl or like a monkey or you know whatever you're, yeah. you're doing a completely different a completely different style of it. Like one thing that is very unique to my hands is the way that um, 
where the bones meet in the fingers, I, I bulge out a lot. Mm. Um, so it's like it's it's like this weird thickness <laughs> going across the first or the, I guess the second. Uh, yeah, look like, at, we're looking at our hands now. It's it's weird, <laughs> but uh, um, so like the last part of my hands are quite elegant, but the first part is like a little more fat. <laughs> yeah. And so it's trying to get that into the hand because that's the reference I'm working on. Mm. Of. Um, that's also why usually I only sculpt left hands <laughs> because I'm working with my right <laughs> hand. Yeah. Well, you just mirror to the end and you're done. <laughs> Oh, this is actually a good trick. Um, I think this was something I learned from Scott Eaton at some point, okay. maybe, uh, for doing fingernails, was just masking out the general uh, fingernail area. And now with, with Sculptors Pro, it's super, super nice because you can drag it out, mm. erase some detail, damp standard around, or stuff like that. It's just to get that nice sharpness of the fingernails, no, uh, which can really be it can be really tricky, especially when you're working up. Like, imagine how tiny the little edge of a fingernail is. And when you have the ability to have sort of local detail like this, mm, with sculptures that's a really Pro, good point. It's 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 a lot easier and instead of having to subdivide my model. You know, I don't subdivide this model at any point no. because the tessellation just takes care of everything for me. Yeah. But um, the the nails are a tricky thing. Incorp like sort of really getting the nails incorporated into the hands and sit correctly on the fingers. That's that's tricky. It really is. And there's also a lot of individual variation here. Yeah. Like here you can tell Morton hasn't cut his nails in a few days. Yeah, so that, that's, uh, you know, that's not true to reference. It's <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, there is just a lot of variation. Like, again, like if you're doing this kind of like fierce mutant, maybe you'll make the the, the, the nails like thicker and, uh, mm. and make them into more like claws. Or if you're doing... If you're doing like, you know, an elegant woman, you just make them long and curvy and yeah. really just elegant here. Yeah, so like, okay, looking at my nails now, we're looking at, I was looking at my girlfriend's nails the other day compared to mine. Mm. So mine is sort of like square-ish. They like, they go out square all the way around. Hers sort of like taper towards the end mm. and they go down, mm. and which makes it uh, more elegant, whereas mine is just like straight. Yeah. Oop. So there, there's so much variation in, in hands. It really is. But that's something like in general, like first, of course, you have the foundation, which is the whole like bone skin, all that. But then again, you do got to observe that's a foundation for it. You need yeah. to understand how to do anything else. But the rest is observation. It really is properly looking at what something looks like. Don't assume you know what a hand looks like just because you <laughs> you have a hand. Yeah. <laughs> you, you probably Look you at probably your don't. Hand. Yeah. Like I, I I assume whenever I'm sculpting anything like this, I assume that I don't know anything about it because. Even if you've been doing this for a long time, like like I said, there's so much individual variation. And the difference between a perfectly okay sculpt compared to a really, really good sculpt is often like just the subtleties. Yeah. One thing that I make use of here that I guess we talk about in a lot of our videos when we do sculpting is hitting the V key. Mm. So you have black and white in your color swatch by default. By hitting the V key, you sort of switch to black. Yeah. That gives me a pure silhouette view. Yeah. So that allows me to sort of figure out do, do i like the pose of the hand as well yeah. so is, is this this sculpt is not just about making a hand it's also making a a hand that's positioned nicely you know i want it to look like a nice sculpture at the end of it yeah it's a sculptural piece yeah. it's not it's not just an exercise and oh yeah you have five fingers no <laughs> oh and here with the thumb you have like two tendons going down on the mm. side they sort of like they go to different areas so just like to get that more sinuous look for your hand it's important it's also crazy how much volume there's on hand. Like if you if, you, if your hand is completely flat on a table, it's a very flat thing. Mm. But if you if you take it into a fist, like it's it's almost like a round or a square object. Yeah. It's it there is just so much variation here. So that's why like I've also been doing studies where you just you're just doing hands in different poses. Yeah. Because it's a completely different story. It's a completely you, different sculpt all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah, like it, like you said, like it's uh, it, it's like a it's like a complete figure sculpt. Yeah. Like if you if you just consider the hand as an afterthought, where you just kind of like doodle <laughs> something out here, and like it's gonna look weird. Yeah. You can see now that it's the the sort of the base of the detail where the bone sits, the nails, and everything is sort of in place now. Yeah. So I've been moving on to adding volume to the hand. That's sort of the main thing that's missing now. So like when you when you sort of close your hand a little bit, you start mm. to get the folds. You have those like, I don't know what they're called. But you have these like wrinkles going across in the palm of your hand. That's where you can read your lifelines. Oh, that's yeah. the one, yeah. So you have a very distinct, you know, separation between your thumb, which is kind of like, it's just like attached <laughs> yeah. to your hand. And you have like a little muscle fat pad next to that. Mm. And then you have another one sort of on top. So getting that separation in there and filling that out with volume really... 
I think grounds the hand a lot. Makes it look like a hand instead of just having a smooth palm. Yeah. Yeah, hands are so crazy just from an evolutionary point of view. Like how much we can do with them. Yeah. Like you can grab you can grab anything. <laughs> <laughs> like just looking at like um like a human hand versus like a like a primitive primate hand when it comes to like opposable thumbs versus versus non opposable thumbs, it just means you can just do so much more with it. Yeah. And also like all the fat pads and all it's also just it's more comfortable to hold stuff. It's more you get a you get a better grip when you're holding stuff. It just the hand is just so so well well not i was going to say design but uh <laughs> <laughs> it's it's from an evolutionary point of view is incredibly impressive it's evolved very well yes <laughs> <laughs> so and i guess like if you were doing let's say you were doing exactly the same pose with a hand like and you were using your hand as reference obviously it would look completely different yes. the way that the skin folds there might obviously be some similarities but the way that my skin chooses to fold or yeah. whatever is going to be different from your oh my god it's a broken thumb <laughs> i promise it'll, it'll not be broken for long i guess <laughs> well, <laughs> well maybe yeah. yeah again just like i said just observed individual variation for it and if you are doing like some kind of like this is obviously a realistic sculpture here but if you're doing something stylized sure you gotta you gotta stylize it but again figure out what should this character feel like because you get so much gesture and life from it yeah you can really articulate a lot with hands i don't know this this th for some reason this a thumbnail i guess yeah i guess that that is the word the yeah. thumbnail yeah. ah that's where it comes uh, from <laughs> <laughs> is uh i was i was having a lot of trouble with this one so. i genuinely find thumbs to be pretty hard because they're they're like at an angle yeah, like they're like all the fingers are are like uh, same angle, but then yeah. you have the thumb which is like a forty five degrees angle. You see me actually going in, I think, in a little bit, and just maybe I'll, I think I'll, I'm correcting the angle at mm. some point, just because it was like basically perpendicular to the to yeah. the fingers there, which looks uh, looked a little bit weird. So yeah, there's oh, hands are weird. Mm. And you don't <laughs> realize how weird these parts are until you start to properly study them. No. So if you are doing sculpture do these kind of studies properly, you know, properly study these, these areas. Yeah. Like, like this detail here with the, you have the, the ring finger and there's like a piece of skin that folds underneath the, the, your pinky. Like how would I have thought of that no, naturally? You no know, I, I, I position my hand into where I think it should be. And, and then I'm like, Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. The yeah. skin folds down there. So it's, Sure, if you can sculpt this from imagination, that's also very impressive. But that is very impressive. But don't probably. There is just no point because you have hands. Yeah. <laughs> just, just look at your hand. <laughs> Maybe if you don't have hands. Though. Yeah, but then you might have issues sculpting. Oh, that's yeah. true. Maybe you only have one hand. Then find some reference. Yeah, you but then you still have one hand. Yeah, but you, uh, I guess. But it's hard to like yeah. sculpt and look at Take your hand. Take pictures of your hand. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess if you have one hand, you you can really. Yeah. Do. Can you sculpt with your feet? Yeah. Some people paint. Yeah, with yeah, yeah, feet. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Another interesting one about uh, just uh, here's a here's a fact about my fingers for you. My thumb. <laughs> Fun like, fact about Morning's body. <laughs> the, the, the the last joint of the thumb for me like goes out wide. It goes like huh. boop <laughs> instead of like it's not like so normal like with fingers you know they taper a little bit mm. towards the end. My thumb at least I don't know what other thumbs look like but my thumb at least sort of like. It bulges out in the middle of the last <laughs> last joint there. Individual observation, right? Yeah. So and, and really nice stuff to to do with the hand here is, is you know find find also find some anatomy references mm. to be really good. Yeah. Uh, I chose to not follow my own <laughs> advice for this one. Uh, just sort of winged it a little bit, but um, you know, I guess if you develop a shorthand for for things, you start to understand where mm. different parts of like the different muscles are. But just getting the correct sort of muscles in for the for the back of the hand can really can really add a lot of sort of undulation mm, to it yeah um, and this is where i go in and rotate the the thumb because yeah. it, it, it was a little bit weird that it was so perpendicular yeah. to, to the rest of the fingers um what's also important when it comes to to the fingers is that you know everything is connected in the body like the the fingers are connected to the forearm like when you move your finger there are there aren't really big muscles in the finger doing it. It's all the forearm. Yeah, like yeah. you can see that if you if you were to move your actual fingers and you and you hold your hand on your forearm, you know that's that's the extensors and the flexors just doing their thing. That's like that's really if you want to work out your if you want to work out your forearm, you just move your hand up and down. And this is sort of like now we're getting into the last part of 
off the hand was like I realized there was some proportional issues that mm. I wanted to fix. Like the the palm was perhaps a little too long, spacing between the fingers there was maybe a little too much spacing. So just trying to just trying to correct that as like the last last bit of the sculpt mm. here. And we have some nice volume in there, and and we got a basically got a finished hand. Yeah, ready for three D printing. <laughs> it's almost ready for three D printing. Mm. Well, that'd be fun. Let's see. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a video about that. <laughs> I would love that. Would you guys like to see a video on 3D printing? This is going to be just the <laughs> actual printing phase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, this is uh, this is sculpting a hand. Yeah. I don't know how much we talked about actually sculpting a hand, <laughs> but uh, here it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. And thanks so much for watching. Thanks, guys.